from bizarre creations to explosive meltdowns. These 20 jaw-dropping moments from MasterChef are the creme de la creme of what the show has to offer. And if we're talking the wildest, weirdest, and most unforgettable moments of all time, this contestant right here takes the cake for cooking, well, um, nothing. This is a joke. I don't know what to say. So episode four of season four was when the Langostine challenge happened. And Howard was confident about his dish. When Ramsay reminded him that one contestant would have to leave the show, guess who he pointed out as the weakest link? It's gonna be mac and cheese girl over here. Like, I don't think mac and cheese and uh, the shellfish would go. But when Howard walked up with his exquisite dish, Ramsay couldn't believe his eyes. Did you disappear into the library for half an hour? No, I did not. What's more, after slowly sliding the sliced lemons into the trash, which made up half the dish, mind you, Ramsey had a big question for him. What have you been doing across the last 60 minutes? But the drama didn't stop there. You know I'm not a rabbit, and yet you serve me food that's fit for a rabbit hutch. Ramsey asked the other two judges to join him in evaluating Howard's dish, if you can even call it that. And while Ramsey refused to eat it, Joe had something else on his mind. You're in a landslide. You know, this is a waste of our time. Joe not only trashed the dish, because come on, it was inevitable, but also warned Howard that had it been him, he'd eliminate him right away. Howard's hopes of impressing the judges were dashed in an instant. But honestly, I'm surprised he didn't see it coming. But speaking of... You see, it was far from uncommon for things to get tense whenever Chrissy walked into the room. Throughout the competition, she was a loudmouth and picked fights for literally no reason. But there was one contestant with the stones to stand up to her. No, dude, I'm so sick and tired of you bitching about everything. Brie was on a mission to put Chrissy in her place. Who were you? What did you do on the team? You better shut the up. But of course, she wasn't going down easily. I cannot stand her. She is the epitome of the girls that I used to beat up in high school. I hate her. And it wasn't long before she kicked into maximum overdrive. Everything you better shut so the f up, Brie. Really? What are you gonna do? You to Good. I got you. The At this point, Chrissy momentarily forgot that about a billion cameras were pointed straight at her. And let's not forget that the judges were waiting right outside to get the next challenge started. But did Chrissy care? Of course not. As for Brie, she was tired of being the underdog. All you ever want to do is hit everyone in the face. But hey. It's not just the challenges. Sometimes, drama takes center stage even during the auditions. Honestly, a lot of the craziest stuff in this video happened before the show really got going. So stick around if you're like me and usually skip the auditions. There's a lot of juicy stuff in there. Anyway, that aside. Let's talk about the time Fred stepped into the spotlight, hands trembling, as he unveiled what he had been working on. For you, I have today a black vinegar and Ovaltine infused chocolate cake. Simply said, his dish was beyond stunning and the judges knew it. While Arone was excited after just getting a glance at it, Ramsey was trying to soak in every detail of how exquisitely it was plated. But here's the real kicker. Ramsey was determined to make a point when he stepped up to taste it. And while Ramsey was a little preoccupied, Arone stepped in to drop the verdict. We struggle with making decisions. <laughs> and I think that says it all right there. I guess there. Gordon likes it. There's no debate. <laughs> I mean, forget about Fred. Not even the judges could believe what happened. I mean, having Ramsey lick the plate clean has to be an honor, second only to getting a Michelin star. Safe to say, all the hard work and passion Fred put into that dish paid off. That's a yes, take that. Get out of there. And he knew it. And Ramsey was so impressed that he didn't stop even after Fred had left the room. Fair. Wonderful job, Fred. Oh, thank, thank, you. Thank, you. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah, this dish had won over Ramsey's heart, to say the least. Speaking of winning hearts, though, David Miller was quite the charmer in season one. While his journey on the show had its own ups and downs, as all good stories do, you can't say he wasn't iconic every step of the way. 
Did you realize we're coming to US Marine Base today with that top on? Uh, no, sir, I did not. I think someone's gonna beat the <laughs> out of you in a minute. Yeah, that much is obvious. But I mean, if they didn't want him wearing those duds, they probably should have told them they were going to a freaking Marine Base. But instead, they got no warning, no prior notice, nothing. But unfortunately for him, after a point, that funny shirt of his stopped being a joke. David was leaving disaster in his wake, and Ramsey was fuming. Are you dressed like a waiter? Yeah, I want you to cook like a cook. Come on, sure. get in the game. Let's go. And when they finally made it back to the kitchen, Ramsey was quick to notice David's little change of wardrobe. David, first of all, thank you for dressing appropriately. <laughs> Very well. Sarcasm or not sarcasm? That is the question. Anyway, Ramsey has a zero tolerance policy for nonsense on a good day. But the way he laid down the law here is on another level entirely. You're misinterpreting the competition. It's master chef, not master bait. Ramsey has always made it a point to bring out the competitive spirit in every contestant that comes and goes through the MasterChef kitchen, pushing them to elevate their cooking skills to new heights. And he'll stop at nothing to ensure they deliver, even if it means resorting to humiliation. But thankfully, MasterChef isn't all doom and gloom. There's just enough to keep us interested. So on a lighter note, I'm talking about the time when Luca stood face to face with, well, a petting zoo. When the turkey made its move, Luca's initial reaction was pure gold. Don't go get you get it. It. I don't get it. You gotta catch it. I don't catch a turkey. There wasn't a soul in that room that wasn't laughing out of sheer bewilderment. Except Chrissy, because, you know, Chrissy. Meanwhile, Luca, armed with nothing but a spinach leaf, tried to coax the timid turkey closer biggest competition, and third is Jordan. With a little bit of luck and a dash of elbow grease, Luca managed to capture his assigned bird. For a moment, at least. But despite his triumph, he couldn't hide his nerves. There was still a whole challenge ahead of him, after all. But that's a story for another day. I've still got plenty of ground to cover. And next up is this moment from season eight when Christina was confronting Paige about some nasty undercooked meat. Yeah, there was nowhere to hide from her scrutiny, but things got even more intense when she noticed something unusual. Even while facing down the barrel of potential elimination, Paige wore an unyielding smile, and it put Christina on edge. Fat, unrendered. Definitely. You're almost a little too smiley for me for this pressure Sorry. test. She immediately called Paige out over it. And the whole room went dead quiet. Let that be a lesson to you not to mess with Christina. But if we're talking inappropriate behavior, that's just the tip of the iceberg. Considering she didn't name a dish after herself at least. I mean, how self-obsessed do you have to be to do that? I mean, seriously. At least get a couple of years of experience and maybe a few Michelin stars under your belt before you do that. Either way, let me introduce you to Brian O'Brien. So nice, they named him twice. But maybe shouldn't have named his dish thrice. Or, uh, something. Anyway, Ramsey and Tony couldn't help but exchange knowing glances with each other when the so-called Filet O'Brien was put in front of them. This is the Filet O'Brien. But in spite of that, Brian looked pretty proud of his eponymous Filet. But let me tell you, that pride was definitely misplaced. Because instead of being impressed, Tony couldn't resist taking a jab at Brian over it. So you've catapulted yourself with the great cooks of the world. Absolutely. The sarcasm was real. Ramsey, meanwhile, found the whole situation absolutely hilarious. Stop, stop, stop. Filet O'Brien. My name is Brian O'Brien. So you've named it after yourself. I but would the dish live up to his own name? Given that Brian was an absolute nobody, living up to his name probably wasn't going to do him any favors. But in all seriousness, if you want to see where Brian's namesake landed him, well, stay tuned, as I'll be covering some of Brian's uh, impeccable creations in my upcoming videos. Anyway, sticking around in the realm of hilarity for a minute here, cleaning and skinning a lamb somehow ended up becoming comedy gold. Yeah, I wouldn't get it either without context, but it was. Now, if anything's important for a home cook to master, it's the basics. Still, Reba dropped a bombshell by claiming that she'd never done this before. I mean, 
Forget about the preparation part. It's what she said next that left Ramsey in shock. No, sir. This is my first time. Really? I've never even ate lamb. What? Ramsey was taken aback. He was curious to know what her go-to meal was in her part of the country, if not lamb. And Reba's response had to have been a hell of a culture shock for him. So what's the go-to meat that you hunt? Deer, squirrel, rabbit. Squirrel. And it had to have been a shock for plenty of people watching from home, too. Even in the same country, people really do things differently, don't they? Well, either way, it was Ramsey's turn to learn a thing or two. You don't eat squirrel, do you? Yeah. What part of the squirrel is the best bit for you, then? I like the squirrel legs. Squirrel legs. But I haven't even gotten to the best part yet. My uncle likes to suck the brains. He sucks the brains. Throw the head in there and just suck the brains out of it. Now, we've seen pigtails and cow cheeks and whatnot, but squirrel brains? We're better off not having them in the MasterChef kitchen. Do you want a prion disease? Because that's how you get a prion disease. Maybe don't look that up if you're out of the loop. Just stay away from brains. Back to Reba. Since she was accustomed to hunting, skinning the lamb wasn't much of a challenge for her. If you've skinned one animal, you've skinned them all, I guess. But the same cannot be said about Jennifer. Those bones look terrible. Terrible was an understatement. How about trying horrific on for size? That looks like a dog chew. Clearly, Jennifer struggled, but Ramsey wasn't going to give her a pass over it. But it's what he said next that left Jennifer dazed and confused. Have you ever been in an airplane where it hits turbulence and the thing starts nosediving? Yeah, there was absolutely zero context for that metaphor. But hey, let's let Ramsey cook. I have, watching you cook. I mean, how does he even come up with things like that off the top of his head? Anyway, when a scene straight out of Hell's Kitchen makes its way into MasterChef, it's only a matter of time before things get intense. And that's exactly what happened in this season 8 episode. Considering they had to feed about a million and one guests, I'm sure you can already see some similarities cropping up. And it wasn't too long before Ramsay spotted a bowl filled with only center slices, and he couldn't figure out what happened to the rest. And Jason's response sent him over the edge. Are you telling me this is a uh, We just wanted to have a nicer presentation, so we chose the uniform cuts that are in the middle. Ramsey couldn't believe it. The dude had butchered the most expensive cut of meat in the country beyond recognition for that? Yeah. Ramsey got real pissed real quick. But okay. you can't just trash that. It's not a chuck steak. I understand. So the contestant scrambled to fix the error before it was too late. But to make things worse, the ends of the chunk of meat were still underdone. So you can imagine how raw the center portion was. So what do you do when you slice the first slice and it's raw? What do you do? it back. That's it. Moral of the story, never butcher expensive produce. Let this and what Tavon did to those poor scallops over on Hell's Kitchen serve as a reminder of that. Now, if you're as much of a fan of the crazy things Ramsey said over the years as I am, you might want to brace yourselves. So, the contestants were paired up to create a culinary masterpiece with contrasting cuisines. After they got rolling, Ramsey approached Adam, eager to learn what he was up to. But Ramsey was left with far more questions than answers after Adam said his piece. The dish is uh, Japanese fried chicken with a um, miso... Um Miso parsnip. Yeah, the answer he finally got defied all rules of culinary logic. The concept of contrasting cuisines were completely lost on Adam. And you better believe Ramsay was going to take him to task over it. In as hilarious a fashion as he could muster. Miso confused. At the end of the day, Ramsay was still completely in the dark about where Adam's train of thought was headed. I just don't see much going on. Miso confused. Miso ready to get. Home. Me too, Ramsey. Me too. And a literally nobody surprise, the dish failed miserably. Miso shocked. So, backing up a bit, this particular Japanese American fusion concept turned out to be the most bizarre dish ever concocted. Whatever idea Adam managed to come up with got completely lost in translation. Really, the only thing you can taste is this sort of miso glue that is the puree on the plate. But while Adam's ideas were muddled, Ramsey's criticism was not. I'm Japanese in this. And then the pomegranates, it's like you couldn't stop yourselves. Brutal. Now, let's try and find something a little more coherent to talk about. 
Uh, here we go. Let's talk about Audrey's audition. She stepped up to present her secret weapon. Cakes. Yeah, cakes. But not just any cakes. She wanted to make the judges eat themselves. I mean, I'm not even sure if this is real or just a fever dream at this point. But has this next hopeful figured out how to get her cakes ahead in the competition? Fortunately for Audrey, all she needed was an opening to get the judge's attention. And she definitely accomplished that. That is dope. Look at Joe, he looks like a granddad. <laughs> and that wasn't the only thing she managed to accomplish. No. I actually no. found one picture on the internet wow. of you smiling. Bloody hell. Still, while the judges were amused, they were also pretty perplexed, considering that those caricatures were way more horrifying than inviting. It didn't help that by sticking them into the cakes, they completely disintegrated. <laughs> but in spite of the creepy caricatures, destroyed cakes, and a massive dose of plain old confusion, Audrey's creation was actually pretty spectacular. They're caricatures, they're not supposed to be exact. I know! I thought she was screwed as soon as her cake fell apart, but she actually walked away with an apron there. And mere moments afterward, the narrator dropped the most hilarious thing I've ever heard him say. For the first time, Gordon bites his own head off. Zero notes. But if you thought Audrey's idea of impressing the judges was absurd, this next one, well, it's gonna make those disturbing little judges look absolutely mundane. So we're back at the auditions where, like I said, all the wildest stuff seems to happen. Not least of which is when this husband and wife duo took center stage for all the wrong reasons. Now, this dude, like Audrey, was after the judge's attention. And you have no idea what lengths he was willing to go to get it. This is my special treat. I have been looking forward to serving this for you guys for a while. Yeah, the guy actually started setting up an entire freaking bed on top of his station. But that was nowhere near the most insane part. You're kidding me. Are you competing for MasterChef with, is this your dish? Yes, it is my dish. Sushi body platter. You literally cannot make this stuff up. I'm honestly shocked they didn't call in security to take these two nutcases away before the FCC slapped them with a TVMA rating. Are you serious? Body sushi. Anyway, trying to keep an open mind, the judges walked up to the, uh, table, I guess, and took a hesitant bite. You just poured soy sauce over your lady's tummy. She was stretched out before them, topped with nothing but sushi and rose petals. And Ramsey absolutely capitalized on the joke the two had unwittingly set up for him. This is not the kind of place I want to find a hair in my food. Absolutely. At the tail end of this madness, would you be surprised if I told you the guy won an apron and then eventually won his whole freaking season? Well, you should, considering that didn't happen. Far from it, the judges sent the two packing. But... Hey, at least one of them got a kick out of the whole thing. Gordon Ramsay ate sushi off of me. <laughs> well, if ever there was a conversation starter. Honestly though, this audition made me wonder exactly how far some people are willing to go to get their 15 minutes of fame. And again, I'm honestly bewildered that they gave the two the time of day. Remember when I said I was gonna steer us in a more coherent direction a couple of entries ago? Why don't I make good on that promise with a completely ordinary case of obliviousness? Ever heard the term premature celebration? Samantha. I think a lot of people are gonna be jealous of me. Well, these three were the poster children of the concept. In a moment, all the cheers transformed into sheer shock. You managed to cook what we think are the Worst. Well, the judges looked pretty pleased with themselves. The bottom three contestants were left embarrassed for celebrating a win they didn't even earn. But with that, those crazy auditions just keep pulling me back in. But fortunately, no body sushi this time around. Just good old Ramsay meeting his Scottish match. 
Scottish? Yes, Glasgow. Glasgow? I know. <laughs> Don't really understand what you're saying, but I guess you guys are paisanos of some sort, right? Yes. <laughs> Joe may have been confused by the two most discernible Scottish accents in the world, but Ramsay had the pants charmed off him right from the start. They really hit it off like they were long-lost friends reunited after ages spent apart. I've actually done Scottish salmon and haggis on croute. But all the Scottish charm in the world does not a master chef make. So, what did she bring to the table? Well, it's the heart of the lamb, and it's kidney, and it's boiled in the lining of the sheep's stomach. While Ramsay was as pleased as ever, Joe was still pretty unsure. But thankfully, Graham was here to pitch in with a little insight about Scottish cuisine. Thanks, Graham. Anyway, real talk. How did this little dare of hers turn out? <laughs> oh my goodness. Are you kidding me? <laughs> but let's get a bit of real Scottish insight in order to get to the bottom of this. It makes me feel homesick. Yeah, it was a bold strategy bringing a bunch of very culturally specific flavors to LA right from the heart of Scotland. And Ramsay couldn't be more grateful for the experience. So grateful, in fact, that it earned her her apron. And she definitely did her best not to squander her opportunity. Unlike this contestant, who seemed to forget that his fate was in the hands of the judges, not his own. How are you? <laughs> yeah, reality came knocking the second the judges got their hands on it. Sadly, the dish leaves me filled with dread. You're not only outside the box, you're on the moon. Ugh. It was nowhere near MasterChef material, and the contestant had to leave in shame. And it served as yet another reminder to, I don't know, maybe celebrate after you've earned your big win? Who would have thought? But my final contestant of the day really could have benefited from learning this lesson before heading into the competition. Strange. We didn't expect it from you. It was really something subpar. We were very disappointed. I'm talking about everybody's favorite season two hotshot, Christian. When the judges had nothing but good faith advice for him, he decided to drop a heaping helping of attitude on their plates. I think you're wrong. I don't think my dish is the worst dish here. That's this dish look pretty of course the judges weren't going to let him walk all over them. They put him in his place so thoroughly that I'm sure it still lives rent-free in his head to this day. I don't agree with you. Well, we're trying to give you constructive criticism. If you were a man, you'd take it on the chin. But if getting berated didn't do the trick, maybe getting kicked off the show would. Unfortunately, your talent's not matching your arrogance. So there you have it. My top 20 picks for the craziest moments that MasterChef has ever seen. But at the end of the day, this list stops and starts with my opinion. So I'm curious to hear what you'd put in your top 20. Let me know down in the comments. Or if you're feeling bold as the body sushi couple, drop by my social media pages and get in my DMs. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to drop a like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications to keep more videos like this one coming. And speaking of, check out this next video I've got for you here. It's even crazier. Maybe not as crazy as the body sushi, but I'm confident you'll enjoy it all the same.